There's All Tomas. Set. Hey, Tomas, good to see you. Ah, good to see you too. So, web forms migrating to .NET Core. That's exciting. Yeah, everybody yeah. who has a web forms app is going to want to do this. Yeah. So you've got a really good topic here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so greetings, everyone. Um, greeting you from Prague, Czech Republic. Uh, my name is Thomas Hersek. I'm Microsoft MVP and CEO of Friganti, and I will show you one of the possible migration paths for ASP.NET Web Forms application uh, and how to get it to uh, .NET Core. Uh, first, I would have to say that it's not a magic wizard or any other tool that you would magically run and it would uh, spit out a working uh, application in .NET Core. Yeah, from the from the web forms one, it will require some significant amount of work, but it should be much easier than to rewrite the entire application from scratch. That's why I have to without rewriting everything in the title. You will have to rewrite something, but uh, hopefully we won't uh, do a full rewrite. Okay, so. Uh, Every version of uh, .NET Core has been filling some gaps of what was what was what was possible in uh, .NET Framework and what's uh, now possible in .NET Core. And with .NET Core 3.0, we can do desktop applications in WinForms and WPF, and we can also use Entity Framework 6, which is also very uh, popular and very widely used. Uh, but there are some gaps that uh, will probably never be filled. Uh, for example, uh, ASP.NET Web Forms, which won't be ported to .NET Core uh, in the future. So uh, you can you have basically two options. You can keep uh, running on .NET Framework, which is here, which will uh, be supported forever. Said uh, Scott Hunter said uh, forever. Uh, but uh, of course. Uh, uh, if you want to take advantage of some new things in .NET Core, and there is plenty of improvements, for example, the new project system, the new get handling, it's much better in .NET Core projects than in old uh, .NET Framework ones, or some uh, runtime improvements, performance, then .NET Core may have a lot of benefits for you, and uh, maybe you will want to get away from web forms with the small effort, so just replace web forms with something else to be able to run in .NET Core. Uh, I have seen a lot of uh, web forms applications that are more than 10 years old, actually. Uh, some of them were started when .NET Framework 1.0 was here, so it's all, almost 20 years old. And uh, one of the common anti-patterns that can be found in a lot of web forms apps is the mixing of the business logic with the UI manipulation. So we have a button underscore click method in your code behind, and you are communicating with the database and also manipulating the UI, which makes uh, difficult to uh, replace the UI framework with some other technology, but still with a small bit of refactoring, it can be possible. And uh, a lot of these applications, they are not perfect, but they are there, and a lot of companies rely on them. They are still used, they still need to be maintained, they still need some bug fixes and uh, adding new features. Uh, as the world evolves. So it's not very easy to just throw them away and start building them uh, from scratch. And I have also done a consulting and help to other companies which were using web forms. And I have found that a lot of uh, teams uh, didn't had uh, the new modern web skills because they were still working with uh, quite old technologies and they didn't have time to learn JavaScript and not only the language, which is a little, which is easy to learn, but all the ecosystem around JavaScript, Webpack, NPM, and all those tools. There, are, it's and. And if you look what do you need to know if you want to develop in React or in Angular, it's quite a huge amount of knowledge that you need to adopt before you can effectively work in these technologies. So there is the fundamental question if you want to rewrite the application from scratch, 
or if you want to try to modernize it. And it's not only a technical decision, it's also a business decision because there may be, might be some constraints about budgets. Uh, I have often saw that uh, rewriting means that you need a second team that will be doing the new application Why? while the current team is working on the old one. So it may not be viable to double the capacity of the project uh, and keep it for a few years until the entire application is rewritten. So the modernization can be a way. It can take few weeks, it can take few months, but uh, one of the advantages is that typically this modernization can be done by the team that already exists and knows all the business logic and knows the problem domain. So uh, what would be the goals for the modernization? Uh, I think that uh, it's pretty obvious since uh, many things in .NET Core are same as the, in the .NET Framework. You can use Entity Framework 6, for example, with .NET Core 3.0. So the only remaining piece in many web forms applications will be just the web forms and system.web. So basically, we need to replace everything which depends on system.web with some other UI technology or library framework. Uh, it can be uh, anything. There are plenty of choices. But of course, we would like to keep most of the business logic as is. Because if you start uh, refactoring and uh, redoing also the business logic, then you are rewriting almost everything. So if it's possible to keep most of the business logic as is, it would be great. And also what we are looking for is an incremental way of modernization because uh, you need to still take care of the old application. You need to fix bugs and deploy it to production. So uh, we are looking for a method that can be done simultaneously with the uh, current development works on the project. And after we replace web forms with something else, uh, there should be nothing that would prevent us from just going to .NET Core because most of the libraries we will be using will probably be uh, supported also on .NET Core thanks to .NET Standard. So which UI framework? It's a difficult choice because there is plenty of really good and viable options. If you are familiar with JavaScript uh, and things around it, you may use Angular, you may use React. If you are adventurous enough to try a new technology, you can use Blazor. Uh, but uh, all these technologies means that you will need your business logic exposed to the client because the code is actually running on the client side. So you will have to take your business logic and build a REST API or some other kind of API in front of it. And it may not be as easy uh, as it seems because in many cases it uh, won't be one-to-one. -one. Uh, the REST API may look a little bit differently than the current business logic because it's not a problem if the code behind uh, does 20 queries to the SQL database, but it can be a problem if the client-side application would issue uh, 20 HTTP requests, which could be sequential because there would be some performance issues. So you will need to redesign the REST API to better fit the user interface because there will be a lot of round trips for every REST API call. So uh, one of the options that can be used is a framework which is called .vvm. And it's open source. It's, uh, as the name suggests, it's using model view view model approach. And it's a proud member of .NET Foundation. Uh, it's developed on GitHub. And uh, one of the advantages of this framework is that you don't need to expose your business logic as a REST API because the view models are C sharp classes which are running on the server and you see the database from the server. So you can just use Entity Framework to get your data and you don't need to build REST API endpoints and making sure everything is running. So this will help you to keep most of the business logic unchanged uh, so it can mean less effort for the modernization. And .vvm supports both .NET Framework and .NET Core, so you can install it in existing web forms application and start migrating page after another page. And after you are finished, you can just switch to .NET Core because .vvm is supported on both platforms. And uh, as a web forms developers, you will 
be uh, it will be very easy for you to learn .vvm because it's it's it was founded more than five years ago and it was inspired by web forms and it successfully got rid of all the hated things on web forms like the view state or unpredictable uh, HTML that was rendered. So .vvm had solved these issues using uh, Knockout.js and other JavaScript libraries. But uh, most of the things can be done without the knowledge of uh, JavaScript. If you know JavaScript, it will help you. But if you don't know it, you can just use HTML and C and you will be able to work with .vvm. So the plan for the modernization will be quite simple, but it can take a few weeks or months on a real-world existing project. But first, you need to install .vvm NuGet packages in the project. Uh, there are two of them. And then, uh, until you get rid of all uh, the web forms uh, pages, you can just take some uh, ASPX page, rewrite it in, in .vvm syntax, for the views, it's similar, it's but it's not the same. And most importantly, you will need to refactor the code behind files into view models. It's uh, also C sharp class, so basically you can just copy paste some code and change it so you won't manipulate the text boxes and other controls in the user interface, but you will use data binding instead of that. As a side effect, you will get a view models which are testable, so it can improve also the testability of your application. And if your business logic is uh, mixed with the UI manipulation code, this is also an opportunity to separate those things uh, so you will end with a proper business layer as it should be done. And after you get rid of web forms, you can just change your CS approach to run on .NET Core. Uh, if you want to see the differences between uh, .vvm and web forms syntax, uh, there is a page .vvm.com slash web forms. I have it uh, here, and there are the differences. There is a code sample in uh, web forms and code sample in .vvm. So as you can see, we don't have the form element around the entire page in, in .vvm. We don't have run at server. You don't need uh, to specify IDs on the controls. We don't have view state. Instead, we have view models and so on and so on. So this is the cheat sheet. Uh, where you will see the differences, but the fundamental concepts are pretty similar as, as you will see later in the demo. So enough talking, let's get to some code. So I have a simple web forms application. I have it already running. So it's basically a starter template for web forms. Uh, there are two pages, the about and uh, the home page. And on the home page, I have a list of uh, a grid view with uh, customers. And I'm using Entity Framework 6, which is connected to my local SQL database. I can do sorting. But as you can see, it uh, makes, because it's web forms, it makes full postbacks. So I have to scroll all the time. Yeah, uh, But I have also a paging. Yeah, so it's, it's web forms. And uh, there is the model folder, which I won't touch during the migration. Uh, it's very simple, but let's assume that this is my business layer. So I'm not touching this. I don't want to do anything in this. I just want to uh, change the presentation uh, framework for something else. So here is the master page. And I have two pages. One of them have grid view. The about page is very simple, just a few lines of text. Uh, the f I have already done the first step. I have installed two NuGet packages in the project. The first is .vvm.owin, and owin is just a pipeline which can be run on top of uh, classic ASP.NET. And I also have Microsoft Owen Host System Web, which is important because it makes the side-by-side -side run of the Owen pipeline in which .vvm can run, and the classic pipeline of the ASP.NET uh, web forms. And it will basically put the Owen pipeline in front of the web forms. So when the server gets the HTTP request, it will go first to the Owen pipeline. And if .vvm can handle it, it will do the, all the things. And if not, it will fall back to the original uh, ASP.NET pipeline so web forms can take care of the requests. So I can just uh, look at my uh, routing code. For example, I have the about page, which is on the 
URL slash about. And when .vvm will handle this request, it won't never get to the web forms. Uh, so I can just create the about page in .vvm and keep this page running in web forms, and it will still work. And if the application would use authentication, the Microsoft Open Host System Web will make sure that the same user identity will be shared between the Owen pipeline and the web forms pipeline. So no matter if you will do the authentication from the Owen part or from or from the web forms part, you will have basically the single sign on. Both technologies will see the same user, the same roles and everything. So the integration is done quite easily. And the rest of the NuGet packages, there are just the dependencies of uh, one of those packages I have installed. I also have entity framework here, and there are some default packages like jQuery. Uh, .vvm doesn't need it, but it was in the project template. So some of the packages also come from the project template. OK. Um, so uh, I have also created the startup class for Owen. Yeah, because Owen needs a uh, one class which will be executed at the startup of the application, and uh, I am configuring .vvm. So I'm saying register .vvm middleware in the Owen pipeline, and I'm pointing pointing it to .vvm startup, which is a file that contains all the configuration of .vvm, the routes, user controls, resources, and other other stuff. And uh, basically, that's it. Now I can create uh, two folders. The first one is called views. Oh, sorry, I have it already in the file system, but it's not included in project. So I will have to just include it. OK, they're empty, that's correct. And uh, it's just a convention. You can have uh, .vvm pages uh, everywhere, but uh, I'm just following this convention. And the first thing we will need to do is to create a master page. And I want my users don't uh, recognize that the, the site is running on two different technologies. So I need to make the master page looking exactly the same. So I will use the same structure and I will use the same CSS. So let's do it. I will add new item. And uh, if you install .vvm for Visual Studio, it's the extension that can be downloaded for free for, from .vvm.com. Uh, you will get uh, item templates for .vvm pages. So I can create a master page. I'm calling it site. And it can uh, create a view model for me automatically. So uh, I have uh, this page, which is in .vvm syntax. And this view model, which is right now, it's just a C Sharp class, nothing special. So I can create the same master page. So let's copy everything from the web forms one, except of, the of this first directive. So let's copy everything and let's paste it here. And uh, as I said, there are a few changes in the syntax. So we don't have the run at server. So I can replace it for just empty string. Let's go. I don't need the form in my page because .vvm uses uh, Ajax for all the communication with the server. So nothing really special here. And the extension also tells me that ASP content placeholder is not available in .vvm, but the concept of master pages is same as in web forms. So I just change the prefix to dot and we have the .vvm master page ready to go. Uh, there is so one interesting thing that VVM also supports single page apps. So if I use SPA content placeholder uh, instead of content placeholder, I would have single page app. You can try this. Also, there is uh, one important thing in web forms. I have used this expression to just uh, print out the title of the page in .vvm. I have to persist my state in the view model, so I can uh, I can put the title property in the view model and just create a data binding which would uh, which would reference this property from the view model i can just have it created and uh, if i press f12 okay uh, here it is uh, i can change it to string and uh, because uh, in web forms, I often struggled with uh, that I forgot to set the title because when you create web forms page, this title is empty. So all my pages didn't have title. And in .vvm, uh, you can make this class abstract because it's master page view model. And uh, this will basically require all the 
specific pages which are using the master page, they will have to provide the title. So I have compile time check of uh, whether the title is present in the page or not. So I'm binding to a view model property. Okay. And uh, at the bottom, there was uh, I'm printing the date time now year, and uh, there is actually no reason to have this uh, in the view model. So I will use a different kind of binding, which is called resource. And basically, this will just evaluate the C sharp expression placed here and just print it out in the output. So now I have uh, the master page for .vvm, and it will use the same styles, so it will look exactly the same as in web forms. Now let's create a normal page, and I will be migrating the about page first. So this is it. Uh, let's create a view model automatically, and also let's use the master page. So I will just uh, select the master page from the list. And now I have uh, my about uh, view model, and because it's the abstract class, it requires me to provide the title. So about and uh, if I look in the web forms page, I can just copy paste this into my .vvm page. And also I have to change the data binding. Okay, so here we go. And the last thing is I need to register the route for my .vvm page. So in the .vvm startup, I say config route table at name of the route is about uh, the route URL will be about so it has to be the same as in web forms and the path is views slash about dot HTML and that's it uh, if you after you migrate this project to dotnet core if you plan to uh, run it on Linux which is possible um, make sure that the casing in this path is exactly the same as uh, in the file names because the paths in the file system on Linux are case sensitive. Yeah. So, and uh, also it's safer to use forward slashes. Both of them will work on Windows, but on Linux, it's better to use this one. Okay. So let's, uh, let's run it. I hope that I haven't forgot anything, but right now we should have the same looking application. The first, the default page, it's is still in web forms because we haven't registered route for that in .vvm. So this is still web forms. As you can see, it's doing full postbacks. I have to scroll down after every action. But if I click about, it takes a little bit longer because the first request to .vvm needs to make sure everything is started. But if you look uh, now, the refresh, it's, it's uh, very fast. And if you look here, there is no view state. I'm now running this page in .vvm, but the rest of the application, which is still in web forms, it works exactly the same. So this is the way how you can migrate one page after another. And uh, after you get rid of all web form stuff, you will be able to go to .NET Core. Let's advance in time for a little bit. I have also rewritten the default page, so I have it uh, completed here. So let's look how I worked with the grid view in uh, web forms very quickly. So I have uh, I have been using uh, the model binding. So in my code behind there is a function called my grid get data, and I have specified some columns and uh, sort expressions and things like that. Uh, here I was just creating a new uh, data context for entity framework, and in this my grid get data I need to uh, specify all these parameters to make sure that sorting and paging will run and web forms will find those parameters and fill the correct values in them. So I'm just counting the total number of customers and then I'm just returning customers. I have sorting and paging right here. And uh, of course you should dispose your uh, DB contexts uh, because we want to do uh, the good things. Okay, so this is uh, very easy. And if you look uh, how uh, the, the grid view looks in .vvm, you will see that we have a similar control. So it's .grid view. We have a data source, which is pointing to a customer's collection in my view model. I will show it uh, in a minute. And there are specification of the columns, and also it's very similar. We also have the template column, so we can 
put anything in, in, the, in the table. And also we have a data pager control, which is bound to the same collection and it will just render the pagination. And uh, in the view model, it's uh, quite nice because I can use dependency injection. So in the constructor of the view model, you can request any services you will need. And I have a property called customers in my view model, and uh, it's of type grid view data set. It could be just a list, but uh, a list is just a plain collection without sorting and paging. Grid view data set is a class which ships with .vvm, and uh, it's basically a list of customers with some metadata for paging and sorting. So I have the page size, you can set also the page index, and this is where the current page index is persisted in the view model and the sort expression, so it means which column I'm using for sorting. And if you want to load data in the grid view data set, and if you have iQueryable, it's very simple because you can just say customers load from, for load from queryable, and it will handle the sorting and paging automatically, so you don't need to use order by and skip and take, just pass iQueryable and you are done. If you are not using Entity Framework, you can work with the data set manually, so you can just say items equals and put there a collection of the rows for the current page, and you can look at the sorting options to sort expression or to paging options to know what's your page index. Yeah, so if you are using plain SQL, you can, you can just fill the collection in the grid view data set automatically, uh, manually using uh, the C sharp code. And these controls can work with the data set. So if you change something in the pager, it will just set the new page index and it will indicate the refresh is required. So when .vvm will call the pre-render function, it will load the new data for the page. So that's it. This is my default page. And when I, uh, when I run it, you will see that it looks the same, but it's now in .vvm. So I have successfully get rid of all web forms stuff in my application and the first request takes the long time because entity framework 6 is initializing and also the ASP.NET pipeline it's still there it's not used anymore but it's still there and uh, now I uh, the paging looks a little bit differently because the controls are not exactly the same but they are very similar but it should work and uh, all the requests are done by Ajax so when I uh, I'm changing the sort order, I don't need to scroll to the top of the page. If you look in the page source, there is no view state. We just have the view model, which is serialized and sent together with the page. So that's it. Now I have all parts of my application in uh, .vvm. So there are no ASPX pages. The only relict is this global ASAX where I'm just configuring the entity framework. So I will need to move this elsewhere, but all other things, there is nothing that would depend on system.web. So you can just unload the project and basically uh, remove almost everything which is in the CS proj. Yeah, so it's, as you can see, it's very long, but uh, I have already done it. So as you can see, now you can just add netcore app 3.0 and I'm now using .vvm.aspnet core. So I have to change the NuGet package from .vvm.owin to .vvm.aspnet core. And I am using 2.4, which already supports .NET Core 3.0. If you will use the 2.3, you will have to be on .NET Core 2.2. But the 2.4 supports .NET Core 3.0. So that's it. And I'm still using Entity Framework 6.3, which is also supported on .NET Core 3.0. And the views and view models are exactly the same. I have not touched anything here. I haven't also touched anything in my business layer or something like business layer because it's very trivial. And the only change is in the startup file where I have moved the line from the global ASAX. I also need to configure the DB provider factory because it was done in web config uh, in the previous project, but now on .NET Core, we don't have web config. And I'm just registering .vvm uh, in uh, and, uh, the startup class. And here in the configuring pipeline, I'm just adding the .vvm middleware. And that's it. So basically, I have replaced only the pages with pages 
done in another technology. It's conceptually similar to web forms, so it will be very easy to adopt and learn .vvm for every web forms developer because most of the controls are very similar or and they are even using the same names of the properties. And you can uh, do this migration over a few months and you can deploy the application at any time because these technologies can coexist together in one application. So I have the last slide here, just a link to our GitHub repository. We'll be very glad for any feedback. And uh, if you go to .vvm.com slash modernize, there are more information and the link to GitHub repository with the project I have been just showing. Uh, make sure you will see all those branches because in every branch there is each step of the migration. So the first branch is just plain web forms application. This is how it looks after you install .vvm. This is when the migration is in process. So some pages are migrated, some are not. This is how it looks like when the migration is complete. And this is just the switch to the .NET Core. So make sure you will visit all the branches to see all the steps in this process. And of course, we will be happy for any feedback. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to help you and wish you pleasant migration experience. All right, Tomas, thank you so much Very for cool. all that. It, you know what? It, it is. It's a nice ramp. It's a nice bridge for those web forms developers to get to .NET Core and still have a application that looks very similar to where they started. Yeah, we have been using this uh, for a couple of our customers, mostly the banks and other institutions. So we have ported uh, applications with hundreds of uh, web forms pages. And uh, it, it wasn't easy. Still, you had to rewrite a lot of things and refactor uh, the code behind into view models. But uh, it was also an opportunity to make the application much more maintainable because the view models are testable so you can write integration tests for them and also you can do a small refactoring of the of the business logic uh, but still there's so much of it that you don't want to refactor or redo it uh, from scratch so it was a great method and it proved well if uh, with some of our customers that's cool. great that's great all right well, thank you, Tomas. It's been great having you here as part of .NET Conf, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you. All right. Bye.